Hey everybody, it's Keith here again. In this video, we're going to be talking about why I program or code with NVDA Screen Reader versus JAWS and why I choose to use Visual Studio Code. So, <clears throat> it's really not, it's more about what brought me here. Um, so the biggest thing is, is whenever I started, I, I, I really didn't know that I wanted to do um, anything with websites uh, or anything like that for as a career so but I knew I was interested in computers now when I was 17 is whenever I lost my sight I became completely blind and then um, that's so that was in the end of 2009 so in 2010 I uh, that was when I was introduced to um, JAWS so from 2010 till 2017 JAWS was all I used. Now, I was just, um, loved to be on the computer and loved to learn things about it, but I didn't start actually writing any type of code until 2017. So, in 2017, this is whenever I started college, and, um, my second semester, or no, it would have been my first semester, I took an HTML class. So, it was basically a website development where they taught you HTML, CSS, and they introduced JavaScript for you just to kind of understand how it is implemented, but um, more or less the main project was to build just basically a static page uh, and your basic HTML markup. So, <clears throat> the, so when I took that class, I used JAWS. Um, I mean, I, I knew about NVDA, but I was an avid JAWS user. I, um, uh, I mean, you couldn't tell me to use anything different. So, what happened was, is I took the next semester took a Python class. So it was inter introduction to programming, and the uh, language they taught you was Python. So in this class, my professor introduced me to um, an internship. Uh, opportunity with the county I live in so the next semester the next semester after this I took up that internship this was 2018 uh, in January and this is whenever I started to see the problems that were were the problems started to come up uh, while using JAWS and at the time I was using just a regular old notepad. So what happened was, is if I come back a little bit, whenever I was just looking at code on my own or playing around, um, I didn't learn about indentation until I took that Python course. Now when I took that Python course, I didn't um, even look into the screen reader being able to tell me spaces so um what i would do is is i would actually manually press the space bar and then i would manually use the arrow keys to see how many spaces so <clears throat> obviously this came out to uh be error prone a lot of bugs and um took a lot of time a lot of time so whenever i jumped into the internship in january that was in wordpress so we were writing html and then that's whenever i started learning the um sop the standard operating procedure you'll find in most development environments um even though the pace is a little bit slower whenever you're in a local government it's still you still follow the same standards the same principles so uh especially like common practices when coding uh you know i learned that indentation was might have been a way to delimitate um in python but it's also a way to format your code in every other language for readability whenever you're working with a team now i could do this but again it took time i had to be i mean sometimes code would be You'd be in, you'd be embedded inside of elements five, six elements deep, and you've got, um, you know, fifteen in between sixteen and thirty-two spaces, and looking at that manually 
was very, very time consuming. So <clears throat> what I would do, uh, I finally figured out that JAWS could tell me the indentation, the spaces. So that helped out a little bit, and then I learned about Notepad++. So that um, made me feel a little better, but then I started noticing that with JAWS and Notepad++, the it was very delayed. Now, I, at this time, I was using a, a computer, uh, just a normal processor, but it had 4 gigs of RAM, and it was, I believe, 500 uh, gigabyte storage on a hard drive. So this was a, a few years ago. And then, um, so JAWS didn't run very well on that. And even when I upgraded to 8 gigs of RAM, uh, still having a hard drive, JAWS would uh, perform slow. So I finally um, obtained a contract position a few months later with the same county I live in where I was uh, doing the internship. Now, this is where I got a virtual machine. So I had to remotely access my um, virtual machine through their network. <clears throat> now, immediately, this became a problem with JAWS because I had to be authorized to use um, that uh, the the remote access. So once I did that, and I I got JAWS downloaded on the virtual machine, and whew, it was slow. Um, I it was I, a couple keystrokes and then five seconds later I get some response you know obviously not uh, a great uh, work environment because there's no way to be productive um, so I went to NVDA I gave it a shot and immediately um, it worked on the virtual machine it was still slow so that's when I requested it was nowhere near slow as JAWS, but that's when I requested the um, a hard machine, and then I just remotely access it, and it works like a charm now. And still with JAWS, that machine was slow. So what ended up happening is on that machine, I learned how to. I got into Visual Studio Code uh, with first JAWS on my own machine. So and then it did not work. Um, very well at all. It's very shaky. So I looked up uh, some information on Visual Studio Code about accessibility and uh, if you use it with a screen reader. So I found that it was actually fully tested with NVDA screen reader. So um, I used Visual Studio Code with NVDA screen reader remotely at work and then um, started getting better with it on my local machine to be better at work. So what happened here was is NVDA eventually just became the primary because I could ver I, I basically can do anything I need to uh, at work. Um, that there's not much that I run into. I really couldn't tell you anything right now offhand that I run into that I can't access. Uh, it even I, I'm even able to use the uh, editors inside of the um, actual terminals like. Uh, P-U-T-T-Y, the SSH shell, so, and um, it, it's fully accessible, um, no problems at all, so this, these are things that <clears throat> I just couldn't get JAWS to do, um, and once I figured out NVDA was going to work for me, I went with it, so one thing I always start with is I figure out the bare basic, basics to get something to work, and then I'll build up as I learn everything around it. And that's what happened. So um, I, I still use JAWS for things, especially reading, and but I, I find myself more often using NVDA now. So, But I'm definitely still a supporter of both because everybody uses one or the other, so they both have to work in a web environment. So, um, that is my reason for using NVDA and Visual Studio Code. So, I hope you learned something from this video. I know it's a little different. We didn't do any coding, but um, check that next video out because we definitely will be. So, we're going to be looking at uh, extensions in Visual Studio Code. So, 
Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.